Yeah, this the 21. In layman's terms, what the hell is going on? Um, so could you please introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Jonathan Lenine. I'm a professor of astronomy and chair of the astronomy department at Cornell. Got it. Very fancy. Um, so I'm going to start off by asking pretty basic questions because in the past, I've talked to NASA scientists about the DART mission, the space laser that just went up, as well as the X-ray polar polarimetry explorer that went up. I understood those better than this because I think those things were a little more granular, whereas this, according to what I've been reading, is everything. So what exactly did the Webb Space Telescope uncover? Okay, so Webb is just beginning to uncover things. We've gone through uh, a seven-month period, nearly seven-month period of uh, unfolding the telescope, commissioning the instruments, now it's ready to go. This is a giant telescope in space. It's got a huge mirror. Uh, it has great sensitivity. Uh, it can pick up very, very faint objects. It has what we call a long wavelength reach. It goes out into the infrared beyond the range of human sight. And it takes really super sharp images as well, which hopefully just by going to the NASA site, your listeners will be able to see. Well, there's the one famous, famous picture that's circulating a ton, and I'm sure you know which one I'm referencing. It is the one with all of the galaxies. I believe yes. it is called... Uh, X. Yeah, X. So to me, it's been explained that those galaxies are several millions, if not billions of years in the past. Could you explain what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, of course, light travels at a finite speed, and the universe is so vast that um, the most distant galaxies, light takes 10, 12, 13 billion years to get to us from those galaxies. So the most distant galaxies in that image that uh, we're seeing, the light from those galaxies started out 13.1 billion years ago. Uh, and that's close to the beginning of the universe. Uh, from other information, we think the universe is uh, 13.8 billion years old. So this is coming to us from uh, the time uh, when the universe was, um, uh, you know, maybe 10%, 20% of the age it is right now. Got it. Um, a, a coworker of mine had mentioned, like, how much time could be left um, for this vast universe, if 13.8 have, has already passed? Is there a lifespan on this thing? Well, no one really knows. Uh, the universe is expanding. Space is expanding. The galaxies are being carried along in the flow of this expansion. Um, but that expansion is getting faster and faster. The universe is accelerating in its expansion. And so one of the real key issues is how how strong is that acceleration? Is it uh, going to uh, essentially tear everything apart in a space of a um, hundred billion years from now, a trillion years from now? I think it's safe to say though, that um, the future of the universe is gonna be longer than the past of the universe. Those 13 billion years, that seems like a long time, but um, there are stars in the universe that can burn hydrogen for a hundred billion years, even as much as a trillion. So I think uh, the future is, uh, is going to be longer than the past, at least for the universe, not for us. So do you think that the Webb Space Telescope is kind of like a crack in the dam and then a, a flood of information potentially about the origins and future of the universe or what is to come? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is like the Hoover Dam, you know, suddenly disappearing and this flood of information is going to start coming to us. And the six uh, or dozen images, depending on how you count them, that were released today, that is just the beginning. I mean, there is going to be uh, data coming back all the time from this telescope for at least the next 10 years. And uh, we're going to learn some amazing things about the universe. So, yeah, it's just a little crack in the dam and a little bit of water is coming out right now. But uh, it's going to be a big dam break and we're going to get a flood of astronomical data. All right, I'm going to ask about the nature of the photos, because a lot of the people are probably imagining a photo like how I know it. You hold up a phone, you take a picture, and then it's there. Right. 
How exactly are these photos generated? Because I'm sure the process is much harder. So um, it depends on the instrument. So all these instruments are sitting behind this large mirror, which is composed of, of 18 segments. And that mirror collects an enormous amount of light. It's basically a light bucket. That light gets reflected off that mirror, focused onto a second mirror, which then bounces that into the back of the telescope. And that light reaches those instruments. Um, the visible instruments use detectors that are not terribly different from what are in our phones. The, um, but as you look to longer wavelengths, um, the detectors are, are very different uh, from what we have in our phones. But the principle is the same. They react to the light at a certain wavelength that's recorded as an electronic signature and that is beamed back to Earth through the antenna on the telescope. So um, in some ways, it's not all that different, even though the particular materials and electronics and so on that are sensitive to that light at different wavelengths is, is different from what's in your phone. So these are like they are pictures, they are not at all artist's renderings. They're not artist's renderings, they're images, but because the human eye can only see a very small part of the range that Webb can see, we're talking about wavelengths beyond visible light, which is what we see beyond the red part of the spectrum. That light uh, is visible to those detectors, but not to our eyes. So the colors that we see in the infrared images are depictions of um, uh, what the colors might be if you could see out in the infrared, if you were a rattlesnake, for example, which can detect heat energy. So in that respect, they're not like regular images, but that's just because of the limitations of the light of our eyes. But they are images in the sense that they are showing us what the instruments on the telescope are registering in terms of the appearance of the galaxies, of the Carina Nebula, um, of uh, that uh, planetary nebula, all those things really are that way. And it's just a question of being able to depict the colors on a computer image so that our eyes can actually see that. Okay, I know we're short on time, but in just a few words, could you explain the significance of these images? So these images show us that uh, this telescope really has won the triple crown in terms of incredible sensitivity, incredible image sharpness and a broad range of wavelengths. And it is ready to crack open the universe for us and make some amazing discoveries. Have any discoveries come about yet? Like official, like we got it. Yeah. So one of the things is that in um, this uh, uh, ring nebula here uh, in the infrared image, you can actually see the second star where most of the material is coming out. That's that sort of egg shaped image if you look at that and and that wasn't really um, observable in the visible it was hidden by the other star so that is um, an obvious instant discovery i would say uh, in these images okay last question uh because of time what will understanding other galaxies help us how will it help humanity how will it help our mission so it gives us a sense of our place in the universe it tells us how we came to be um, from the beginning of the scientific revolution. Uh, these discoveries have basically kind of positioned us in time and space and allowed us to understand who we are and how we relate to the physical universe around us. Well, I thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on the discoveries. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, how do you say your name one time? Jonathan Lunin? Jonathan Lunin. 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 Like the moon, lunar. Moon, You're in the that's, right space. I'm in the right space. space. That's was, that's like four puns. <laughs> All right, well, amazing. I'm always happy to get a laugh out of my guests at least once. But uh, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Thank, thank you, Jason. Take, Take care. care. You Bye -bye. too.